Well, praise the Lord family and welcome to another edition of Bow to the Name. I'm your host, Evangelist Talitha Kumi from the Empire of Jesus Christ, World Evangelism. And I want to thank you all for tuning in uh, on tonight. Tonight I have a very powerful uh, message for you. Um, many of you have been wondering what is going on in the world. Uh, many of you have been wondering uh, with a lot of the things that are going on in the world and a lot of the things that we're seeing on the news. And I submit to you uh, as an evangelist, having been doing this over a decade and reading my Bible uh, frequently, uh, I can assure you that what you're seeing is uh, the manifestation of what the Bible says would take place in the last days. So many of you uh, do not believe that we're in the last days, but whether you believe it or not, we're in the last days. Uh, you can't see oxygen or you can't see the air, but you breathe it every day. I can assure you, just because you don't believe that we're in something doesn't mean that we're not. We are indeed in the last days. And I'd like to take an opportunity to uh, express my condolences to all of those families uh, and that were uh, killed uh, in Florida. Um, but I can assure you that when God says something is going to take place, that you can bank on it. Amen? Now, God obviously was not at the root of what happened. See, many individuals need to stop trying to blame God for things that the devil is absolutely um, responsible for. Amen? See, if you ever take the time to read the Bible, you will find that God is a good God. But because many individuals refuse to believe that there is uh, a devil loose, then you actually uh, convince yourself that God is responsible for a lot of things that the devil actually had his hand completely in. And I can assure you that what happened in Florida was a direct, help me Holy Spirit, was a direct, um, was directly from Satan himself. My topic tonight is what biblical time is it? What biblical time is it? One thing about God, as I've learned through the years, God's love for us is so powerful. His love for us is indescribable. So much so that I can't even with my finite mind and all the education that I have, I cannot even interpret or I cannot even in totality explain to you or describe to you the magnitude of his love for this world. I cannot even interpret it in, in words because it's too awesome for me to do that. But I want you to understand something on tonight. You must stop telling yourself that Satan is not real. You must stop telling yourself that the devil does not exist. Because I can assure you that as real as you're sitting here listening to my voice and viewing this broadcast, he is as real 
as I am to you now. Now the devil's job, he has four jobs, to kill, to steal, to destroy, and he wants your soul to do it. He wants you to do it. There's only one thing that Satan wants from you, and that is your soul. In exchange for your soul, he'll give you fame, which is really an illusion. He'll give you tons of money, which is really an illusion. He'll give you fame. You want to be a celebrity? No problem. You want to be a star, quote unquote? No problem. You want to be the biggest doctor in the world that has diagnosed and, and come up with a diagnosis to cure an incurable disease. No problem. See, it's not the fact that you want to, to be a doctor to come up with the diagnosis to cure disease. It's the fact that you'll do anything to get into that position. Stay with me. So you see, Satan will give you anything that you want. He tried to do it to Jesus. He tried to tell Jesus, oh, if you bow down to me, I'll give you the world. Jesus said, back up. Jesus said, back up, my brother. He said, it is written. And Jesus gave him the word of God. Same thing I do when Satan approaches me with some nonsense. Let me tell you something, my brother. No, you ain't no brother. Let me tell you something, demon. Get thee behind me, because it is written, I shall bow down to Jesus, I shall bow down to God, in God alone. So you want to know what's happening, family? You want to know what biblical time it is? We're living in the last days. That's what time it is. People are going to reap what they sow. That's what time it is. You tell me, oh, this is my truth. I'm going to live my truth. Well, guess what? If your truth isn't God's truth, then it's a lie. If your truth isn't in, in this word of God right here, if your truth doesn't line up with God's truth, then it ain't truth. Amen? Let me tell you something. Never mind what the Supreme Court says. My question is, what did the Supreme God say about it? Amen? See, God loves everyone. It's not his will that any of us would perish. Not one, not one. But when you reject the only person that can help you really live the truth, not your truth, but the truth. When you reject the only one that can help you live the truth from the word of God, he gives us the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ comes and lives inside of us. We even have angels that protect us. We, we, you've never seen, you've never seen a real angel. Don't, don't get it twisted. Don't let these little TV shows that show you these little white, little, uh, little baby angels with the, you know, with the wings and they fly around. Don't get it twisted. You haven't seen a real angel. Have you seen the Empire State Building lately? Try that size. <laughs> Try that size. Full-blown power. You haven't seen a real angel, sweetie. So understand something. God is a gracious God. He allows us to mess up, 
toil through the years, even protects us. But understand something, you have a devil loose. What biblical time is it? I'm gonna tell you what time is it, what time it is. You have a devil loose. And because he knows that Jesus Christ is soon to come, the sooner or the closer it is for Jesus Christ to come, Satan is going to go off. Does Satan want your money? No. Does Satan want your house? No. Does Satan want your cars, your jewelry? No. Does Satan want your fame? You're a, you're, you're a celebrity all over the world. No. Does Satan want your, your fame? You're a doctor. You're the biggest lawyer in the world. And you got there by deception and evil and doing things that you know you shouldn't have been doing. Did somebody say made off? Did somebody say made off? No. Satan wants your soul. That's his big payoff. He wants your soul. So let me tell you something. If you insist on being in clubs and with the drinking and the drugging, if that's your choice, Satan can come right in there and take souls. If you insist on being a drunk driver, you've been caught several times, you're still driving drunk. Satan can come in and take your soul and others with you. Do you insist on smoking cigarettes and you know the consequences of cancer? Satan can come in immediately with cancers and other diseases and take your soul. See, that's what he wants. In this last hour, he wants your soul. Now, let me take a moment to tell you about the grace of God. See, God loves you so much. He doesn't care who you are. God doesn't care who you are. God doesn't care what you've done. When you give your life back to God through Jesus Christ, sincerely, key word, family, that's the key word, sincerely, he will forgive you. Evangelist, you mean if I murdered someone, God will forgive me? Yes, he will. If you give your life back to God sincerely. Evangelist, you mean, you mean if I am uh, uh, shacked up with several women, I got one over in the east side, west side, south side, north side. You mean he'll forgive me? If you're sincere, yes, he will. You mean if I had AIDS and I, I was spreading AIDS all over because somebody gave it to me and I got angry and I said, I'm going to give it to anybody else? Yes, he'll forgive you. God will forgive you if you give your life to Jesus Christ sincerely. You mean if I became a lesbian or if I became gay because somebody raped me when I was a child. And, 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 and through the years, I didn't want to be like this, but I became like this. And I became promiscuous. Yes, God will forgive you. If you give your life back to God through Jesus Christ, sincerely. And he'll give you the Holy Spirit to help you, to be who he created you to be. God doesn't make any mistakes. We do. But God doesn't. 
So what am I saying, family? You want to know what time it is? You want to know what biblical time it is? It's God's time. It's God's time now. Those of you that desire to be saved from what's upon this earth now and some of these things that you're going to see is going to blow your mind. When they took prayer out of school, you know what they did? They said, Satan, we welcome you in because that's what they did. Anytime you reject God and his son, Jesus Christ, you welcome Satan into your situation, full blown. Amen? So what biblical time is it, family? It's time for all of us, for you, to give your life back to God through Jesus Christ. And he loves you so much that grace says he'll forgive you of anything you have done. And I mean anything, anything. Because the blood of Jesus Christ on that cross washed us of all of our sins, past, present, future. All of our sins are washed. Do you know your sins have already been washed and dealt with? Even your sins have already been dealt with. Now, whether you receive this gift or not is up to you. But even the gift has been given to you. And you only need now to receive it by giving your life back to God through Jesus Christ. Let me share with you the seven dispensations before I leave so that you know exactly what time it is in the earth. First dispensation is the dispensation of innocence that was before Adam and Eve fell from the grace of God. They fell into sin. The second dispensation is conscience. That's after Adam and Eve fell into sin, they were conscious that they were naked and they were conscious of their sin. And of course, the world became conscious of sin thereafter. The third dispensation is human government. That's when Israel was saying, we want a king, we want a king. And so the prophet appointed Saul to be their king. And the fourth dispensation is promise. That's when the prophets began to tell the world about the Messiah to come. And the prophet Isaiah said his name shall be called. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And the fifth dispensation is the dispensation of the law. That's when Moses on Mount Sinai gave the children of Israel the law, the pinnacle on Mount Sinai. The sixth dispensation is grace. That's where we are right now. That's where the world is right now. God is saying to the world, come to me through my son, Jesus Christ, and I will in no wise cast you out. I will receive you and I will forgive you. That's where we are right now. But the last dispensation is the millennial reign of Christ Jesus. And that is when Jesus Christ is going to return for his bride, the church, for his children. Those of us who 
Not that we never sinned. Not those of us who never sinned, because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus is coming back for those of us who have given our life back to God through him and have been washed in his blood. So he's coming back for those of us who have given our life back to God through Jesus Christ. Because just like in the Old Testament, when, the, when relative to the Passover, when God told Moses, tell the people to put blood on their door and I will pass over them and they will not be destroyed. They will, they will not be judged. Well, this is the second Passover that's coming. And those of us that are marked with the blood of Jesus, having given our lives to God through Jesus, we will not be judged. But if Jesus comes and you have not had his blood applied to you, having given your life back to God through Jesus Christ, by confessing with your mouth and believing it in your heart, you will be judged. What biblical time is it? I just told you. And on that note, I'm going to say good night. Feel free to visit my website at www.empireofjesuschrist.org. And remember, I love you. But Jesus Christ, he loves you best.